Hello, and welcome to what I find to be a very, very special episode of um, what I hope to be able to make into a series of, uh, of interviews with people that I believe um, really inspired me in how I started to ma um, make content. Uh, so, to redo and remake an old interview of mine that unfortunately isn't available anymore, uh, Mr. Um, FTA, how are you, good sir? Hello, I'm doing well, thank you, thank you for that that very nice intro, though I do, I, I do feel bad that if I'm one of the people that inspired you, damn boy, you need better taste than that. Oh well. Well, it could have been worse, <laughs> at the very least. <laughs> you, you could have been inspired by a brain scratch. Good lord, no. Oh, <laughs> heavens. God forbid. <laughs> um, speaking of inspirations, what inspired you to start making you, uh, internet content yourself? So, um, I was inspired mainly... But well, in a roundabout way, two things originally back in this has gone back. Christ, fifth what, fifteen or so years? But no, yeah, but but between fifteen and seventeen years ago, um, the the earliest kernel of an idea for what would become FTCR was set up by me and um, a friend of mine uh, whose online name was Torch, and we were inspired by this um, Sonic Advance sprite comic called Power Rings. Um, and so we, we wanted to do one of those. I remember we would, we would every once in a while, we, we'd, go to a, we'd go to the old Pizza Hut lunch buffet and just, like, write out plans for a comic. And we... I found, like, two of them that we made on my on my hard drive when I was cleaning it up a little bit ago. And they're, they're f Can I swear in this? Go ahead. I mean... It was fucking terrible. Um... And so it really it was it was gonna be it was just gonna be like a bunch of sprite comics, and then at the time um, I was and still am also a big fan of Transformers, and I used to um, the the company that used to release the the original G One show on DVD was a British company called Metrodome, and I used to post on their forums. And there was um, a fan there by the name of Chris McFeely, which I think a lot of people these days would know him from his amazing Transformers The Basic Show. But at that point, Chris was just a well-known, even back then he was a well-known fan. Um, and I, I honestly forgot what came first, because Metrodome would eventually contract him to record commentaries for their DVD sets, primarily for the... Um, the three uh, G1 Japanese exclusive follow-up shows, like the Headmasters, Super God Master Force, and Victory, I think the third one was called. Um, but also online, just, just for the hell of it, he also recorded two um, commentaries for two G1 episodes, She Chains and Carnage in C Minor, which he just released online for free. And that, that inspired me, because oh, like, at that point... Things like commentaries, I had only known them from like official DVD releases and stuff. Like you can I mean you can just record this shit and put it online. Hell yeah! And so I'm not sure if anyone again some of the early, I think literally the earliest content that would have been uploaded to the find the back then I think the channel was find the computer room was and this was back when YouTube didn't give a fuck about like um um. What am I trying to... Didn't, didn't care about, like, licensed content that's being uploaded. So we just uploaded um, commentaries on, on, like, episodes of Adventure Song the Hedgehog, Song the Hedgehog, Saturday M, Underground, X, um, both the English and Japanese version. It was back in the day when the, the upload limit was 10 minutes, so there'd be, like, three, you know, three parts to, of an episode. Um, and so do, those two things are what got me into doing... So just like starting internet content um and then in terms of how i got involved with like the the lps that was at that point we didn't like we never there was a running joke that for the longest time we never had a functional website but we did for a number of years have a forum um which in many ways that was a mistake because that forum is where ryan and lewis met 
and that helped them form Brain Scratch. So again, that was a big mistake, and I apologize for that. But on that forum, I think the forum is where I first uh, met Entom sixty four. I I honestly can't remember if if because I think he had I think he had seen some of the um, episode commentaries I'd done with Torch and joined the forum. Because at that point, like, I, I even to this day, like, I like YouTube and I follow channels, but I'm not, like, I don't really go searching for a lot of stuff. So I didn't even really, th- I, I'm, I genuinely cannot remember at this point if I was even aware of what an LP was at that point. Um, um, and so he was like, you know, I like your stuff. We should do something. And I was like, okay. And the first thing we did was uh, we did a commentary on the OVA, the, the Song of the Hedgehog um, Japanese OVA. And that's when we moved on to LPs. And I think from that point, it was I, I just like, I would just talk over LPs for the next few years with, with uh, HFC. And then I think I did some with Brain Scratch before. I recorded, I started, like, FTC, I started making our own with uh, Sonic 4 Episode 1. I Yeah, that was the first, like, the first 100% original FTC LP. And things just went downhill from there. As as, as they always do? As, the... as, well, primarily, primarily if I'm involved, yes, things tend to go downhill fast. Anyways, uh, <laughs> I it was a really insightful answer. Uh, jokes aside, um, oh thank you. <laughs> from since you mentioned um, doing LP specifically, do you have a favorite one? Um, I'll tell you my <sighs> own. After I, you I... say. It. Yours. Okay. You know, it's like I don't. <sighs> it would, pr... like, and, and just, just is this one that like I've recorded or just one that I've been in? Uh, that you've been in. It would. <sighs> you, you can answer both if you prefer. You know, it would. I think it would have to be the FT Show O Six OP. Just because from, and again, most most of, of that is just completely down to, to Smoothie's editing on, on like the raw footage. But that is, and, and I say, you know, I know I was involved with it, but I, I say this as someone that's honestly trying to take a step back. And I genuinely think that is one of the, this is going to sound arrogant just because I was involved with it. But I, I genuinely think that is one of the best OPs that has been put on YouTube. The, um... 061 is just if even if you were to remove the comment like us speaking just the raw footage and all of the editing steven did that is one of the best like uh playthroughs of any game put on youtube it's amazing but in terms of uh just ones i've i've but i i, I feel like that i feel like that's like i think most people if if they're aware of ftco would say that 06 is, is their favorite lp so i'm not sure if that's kind of a, a cheap answer but it would probably be Either 06 or the Mega or the Rayman 2 LP, just because we were like I know we revealed it now, but we we would just talk for about 15, 20. We were not looking at any footage, except for I think maybe the last part we we specifically watched the footage, but we would just we would just talk random shit for 20 minutes, and then Stephen would just place it over um, footage. But I'm I'm curious as as to what yours is. Um. Sonic 6 might be a bad game, but it makes great content. But no, that's not my answer. <laughs> oh, okay, interesting. What is it? Um, it's uh, Sonic Labyrinth, actually. Uh, oh, the uh, the the HFC Arky, the, the 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 one we did. We I think we and Steven joined some call me Johnny on that, but I think that's technically a, a HFC OP. But yeah, I remember that one. That was yeah. that, that was fun. I think it's still on. It's like on free channels. And it's on Johnny's, like, something like Johnny versus the meaning of life or something like that. Oh, yeah, I think that was a thing. We used to we used to do that, like, towards the later part of when I was in HFC. We would all upload the parts, which, looking back, it's like, I, it's like I kind of understand why you would, why we did that. But on the other hand, I'm like, it just, it just dilutes the, 
the viewership <laughs> at that point to have it go live on like three channels at once. But uh, um, Labyrinth, yeah, Labyrinth was it was a fun one. Yeah. Actually, you know, I'm thinking about that particular commentary. I remember, like, as a I don't I don't know if it was a joke, if it actually was the case, where um something about you actually being on something. Was there any truth to that, or was it just for the joke? You mean it, so? It's it's been a while. I, like I don't really remember that LP. I assume I make some kind of joke that I'm on something. Yeah. yeah. Is that what? The, yeah. No. At that at that point, yeah, that would have that that was a lie. I wouldn't. That, I mean, that, that was a joke. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have been on something at that point. Honestly, I don't think so. you sell it really well. <laughs> I get in trouble with that sometimes because, you know, sometimes I can be I can be sarcastic or, or dry in in my humor and and like I always like I always try and sell it, so I always I always say stuff that like even if I'm talking complete shit, I'll I'll like say it as if I mean it or if it's true. Sometimes that gets me in trouble <laughs> with people because they don't think I'm they can't tell I'm joking. Yeah, I remember that even Johnny thought he were serious at the time, or at least he sounded like he he thought he were serious. Um, Johnny, you simple boy. <laughs> um, how did um now that we did drop a couple of references to to Brain Scratch? Um, how did you meet them? Um, again, um, Ryan and Lewis, they first connected on the old FTCR forum. Um, and so I, I would, I imagine I, one of them, because I, I definitely remember Lewis's, well, he was Solaris Paradox, I think, which his, his original username was a reference to 06. And I remember him posting on the forum. I would imagine probably Ryan DM'd me on um on the forum i was like hey you want to be in this thing and i was like yeah sure why not i remember that was so that was like i had i I, i'm gonna assume it's ryan it might have been lewis but i'm gonna assume it was ryan him and i uh dm'd back and forth for a little bit but then when i i was i think the first what was it was it i think the first one i did with them was sonic four episode one again um uh, but but that was the first time me meeting them. Like cause I think at that point, I think Ted was in that one. Was Ted part of the group by then? Uh, what I year think would that be? So. Uh, I I don't guess it is as good as mine, my friend. It, it might it might have been around when the time episode four came out. I mean episode one came out. It's about two thousand ten ish, probably around that that time. Yeah, I think he came in around 2010, 2011. Oh god, okay. now I need to check or I'll feel. <laughs> But yeah, um, so yeah, that was when when I met them all, and then I think when I joined them again for generations, that would have been the first time I interacted with Clement. Because again, like I, 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 I was never really like looking up let's plays and stuff. So when I met, especially for those those first, you know, the the, the Brain Scratch guys and Clement, meeting them in like a call was really when I heard of them for the first time. So I didn't really know who any of them were going in. And now I just, you know, hate them all. Um, also, I'm checking. It looks like X and Shadow was Ted. What's that? X and Shadow was Ted. I think yeah, X and, X and Shadow is, is his online username. Yeah. Uh, just checking if I could ch see anything saying when... Ted did join. Well, you know what? I think back in the day they used to. Let me let me just look it up. BSC Sonic Four, because I think back in the day they used to like most people. They used to put a bit more effort into their um into their descriptions, but now no one gives a crap about about uh those. Let's have a look. See if uh, Ted was in the call. I oh, know. I guess not. They didn't. They don't list it as. They don't list it who's in the thing. Okay. No uh, idea. I assume he was. I assume he was in there. 
Okay, around it says his first appearance is part 40 of Resident Evil 4, and that was 13 years ago, so 2011, give or take. I say that's cool. Sick. So, if Sonic 4 was before that, he wasn't there. Okay. Again, that was I just saw that was uploaded 13 years ago. Jesus Christ, no. <laughs> Fucking long ago. Christ, I remember being, like, watching it. Anyways. I, I feel so old, good lord. <laughs> uh, alright, alright, right. right. Uh, so, let's talk about something else other than us being old. Um... <laughs> <laughs> um um, one of the things you're most known for is for um, uh, the Sonic series, and we've been talking, and you've been mentioning it a few times. How did you get into it? Um, I've I've been a lifelong Sonic fan. Um, I will say the first game I ever had. I ever owned was Super Mario Brothers three, but I remember I specifically remember being at. I don't know how old I am. But I'm uh, four-ish, maybe. I remember being at a party that my friends, uh, my, my parents' friends were having. We were at some strange place. I didn't know anyone there, except for my family and stuff. But there was just a copy of Sonic 2, just like the case, like by the TV. And I remember just staring at that for like hours. Like, I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. Um... And then eventually I got a I got a Mega Drive with Sonic 2. I forget how old I was, but it must have it must have been about it was even 92 or 93 because I remember like waiting for Sonic 3 to be released and getting that for Christmas and then Sonic and Knuckles was the very first video game I I bought with my own money which looking back at the timeline i don't know how the fuck that would have worked out because i i don't know how i would have had that much money but i remember that was just like i say i saved up so i'm not sure why my parents were given a freaking five or six year old that much pocket money but yeah that was the f and I, I remember watching the first episode of um adventures or something the Hedgehog, when it first premiered on television i would get um my brother, who was a bit older than I am, was also in the Sonic a little bit at the time. He started collecting the Fleetway produced English comic, Sonic the Comic. So he had a bunch of the earliest issues and he dropped off. And then when I was a bit older, I started really getting into that and reading it. Um, I, I just, you know, it's, 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 Sonic is just one of those franchises that I have just it hooked me in at a young age and I just stayed with it for better and worse for 30 years now. Yeah, it's just one of those series that if it gets its hooks on you, it just doesn't let go. Uh, it's weird because like other other franchises, things like like Ninja Turtles and Transformers, those are things that I liked as a kid, but then I kind of like gave up for a little bit, and then I got and then I got reinvested in them later on in life. Sonic is one that I've always I always kept with, even like um, during in the, in like the late '90s in that period between Sonic 3D Blast and Sonic Adventure One, where there really wasn't anything like Sonic related. I would still, you know, I would still collect the comic books and I would uh, keep watching the shows, even underground. Unfortunately, at that point, but like for for whatever reason, I just always stuck with um, this stupid cartoon blue rat. Well. To be fair, if a series can survive, uh, if a game series can survive not being on any, not having any main series for an entire generation, because the Sega Saturn, as much as I love it, didn't have any. Uh, Wait, oh, it, it, it did. It just, it, it, it technically did have Sonic games. It just didn't have like an original game. You know, like it did have. You know, the Saturn version of 3D Blast and Sonic Jam and Sonic R. So, like, there were Sonic games. Yeah. Just, we, we, we didn't get that, like, the, the killer app for the Saturn, you know? Yeah, didn't get... It's, no one was going Sonic to... Sonic Extreme! Oh, yeah. 
Which one, by the Which, way? I'm sorry, that, that game looked like crap. I'm sorry. Like, it's that game. Like, from all the footage we've seen released, that game does not look like it would have been fun. I'm just going to say that. I don't know. I would have liked to try to go to a universe where it came out just to see how actually play it and see how it is. But, yeah, I would probably right. But it's a thing that I, though I do wonder because... I want to say one of the earliest versions of Sonic Adventure was slightly being worked on for the Saturn before they just jumped ship to the Dreamcast. I do wonder, had we received Sonic Extreme, how different the franchise would be? Like, it would would Sonic Extreme just be a game we look back and be like, yeah, that game was fine, or that game was bad. Would we still have had received Sonic Adventure in the the way it is? You know, like I, I, I wonder how different the uh, there's these little things that keep me up at night. I wonder how different that the franchise as a whole would be if Sonic Extreme would have been released. No idea. I mean, at the time that it was supposed to be released, I mean, Super Mario 64 would have just been released. Uh, Crash Bandicoot 1 was still considered um, a really impressive game, even though it was Sonic's a- ass game is is really good. I agree. Uh, yeah, of course. In terms of gameplay, it held up, but in terms of like, no one considers it graphically impressive anymore. But it was at the time very much so. I, I you know, I, I would, I would argue that even if you look back on it within the context of where when it was released on what platform, I, I still think. You know, I, I still think the Crash Bandicoot games visually, because it's, it, it's the, you know, it's the power of good art direction and people who know how to program. I still, I still think the Crash Bandicoot games still look pretty impressive to this day. There are there, there are so many other PlayStation games that have not aged well, but I, I do think the Crash Bandicoot games still have a really good look and charm to them. Yeah, I really like, especially the second one. It's, Corte- it, this it's this is my hot favorite. take. Cortex Strikes Back is better than Warped. I agree. So, within the context of this of this interview, it's not a hot take. <laughs> High five. Yeah, I'm. But, I mean, but, but also, I get that's, to that's, that's that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but also, that that's why we got the um, the satin port of 3D Blast was because once Extreme was finally cancelled, they didn't have anything. Like I want to say the. Uh, the Saturn port of 3D Blast was made in like seven weeks. Um, you know, he who shall not be named Sonic Arman did the entire soundtrack, I think, in about three weeks. But at that, you know, because they needed the Saturn, they needed something. And like Sonic Jam and Sonic R wouldn't really cut it. It'd be like if, if the Nintendo 64 just had Mario Kart, but not Mario 64, like you needed something. It's like, yeah, we'll just quickly port, you know, uh, 3D Blast will give it a pretty good special stage and do nothing else. That, that's good. That's good. Oh, well. Um, okay. To make a... Go back to questions. Um, I asked what was your favorite commentary that you were involved in. What, which one do you think is the worst? Which one would be like, please Spiral don't one. watch that. <laughs> Spiral 1. Um... Bow the Dragon One. It's it's like a. Uh, I know, TJ and Chris. I think they. They don't feel the same way I do. I I think towards the end, and I don't. I I think there's some pretty fun bits in in Spiral One, but I think towards the end, because we were playing it live, and because. You know, it's it's because you don't. It's hard to gauge when you're doing that live. It's like. I'm not sure how much longer we have, or like, you know, how, how much more should we be talking about this thing or that thing? And just the fact that we'd probably been, been playing for like multiple hours and thinking back on the times we used to record, it was probably getting late in the evening and there may have been alcohol involved. Um, it, it, we, we just descended. And then I, I, I know this is a joke we, we used to all make about FTC, but we literally just devolved into memes and references for a, like a good half of that OP. And it's, it's one of the things when I look in, like, at the time, I was like, yeah, you know, whatever we can say, that's funny to get through. But, um, 
Yeah, I don't. I, I don't think Spiral One is is, is a good LP at all. <laughs> well, I know what I'll be looking up. No, don't, don't. <laughs> although I, although I, I wonder if if Spiral, whatever, whatever Spiral game we did, but we had like this. If so dumb, and this is all my fault because this is how, this is how I branded the episodes. We had this thing called Pizza Quest for like a couple of episodes where we were trying to get free pizza from Domino's. There was some kind of like anime promotion, and we and I spent. I think Chris was playing, and I spent like an hour and a half trying to finagle free pizza, and we never got it. And I think that was kind of a slogan. I think I think that was Spiral Two. I would say you know I would say just watch Spiral Two and Three. For any time TJ does his um, Skeletor voice, the voice Ripto or Moneybags, those those moments are gold. But outside of that, I think the maybe maybe all the Spiral LPs are ones I don't I don't exactly look back fondly on. So Spiral was just cursed. Is the... It might it might I know I know some I know some people TJ likes those LPs, but I was you know, I'm jo- I'm kind of joking with two and three, but I I genuinely think Spiral one. In terms of like the ones I was like directly involved with in that regard, um, I think that is probably the worst. I'm, I'm trying to think of like ones that. I'm trying to think of, of any other ones that like were bad. Um, well, like I'm, I'm sure people was you know, I in terms of like my reaction to recording them, I'm trying to think, like no most of the time I can't. I, most of the time we would walk away being um, like happy with stuff. I know there was a few points in some of the old um, HFC ones where we would have to do, you know, it, it, this also became a joke, but like retakes. Uh, occasionally, like there would be a few parts where like, okay, we've we've had to redo this part for a few times now. Like it's this is it's not it's no longer like fun anymore <laughs> type of thing. But yeah, aside from that, I, I would probably just say. Spiral one, don't don't watch it. Don't watch it. <laughs> yeah, understandable. Um, I think I'm gonna say one of my personal favorite LPs you've been involved in. You've been involved in, even though it was just like the first twelve parts, maybe eleven. It was um the. Um, br- the brain scratch commentary of Wind Waker. Wind Waker, I yeah yeah I'm in the, I'm in the first ten parts and then I think I'm in like the last six or seven parts. But yeah, um, that was a lot of fun. I would have been in, in the whole thing, but um, I had this this minor thing. Was my 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 son was born, so I had to take some time apart from the internet. Something I've never forgiven him for, but yeah, like that that one is also. I am I'm pretty. I like that one. I'm I'm pretty happy. I, a lot. I think a lot, a lot of the brain scratch ones. I I sometimes have better memories of the brain scratch ones just because I I would just turn up, say some jokes, insult Ted, and leave. Like I, I didn't have to. And again, this is true for a, a, a lot of the FTCR ones. But like, I never had to do any work afterwards. <laughs> I just show up, have fun, and leave. But a lot of times with FTCR ones, you know, I, well, I, was, I was either editing them directly or working on it in, in some capacity. The Brain Scratch ones was just like, yep, that's, that was fine. And then I'll never think about it again. Yeah. So you can say that you canonically um, did the deed. You have evidence. I do. I do have evidence that I have procreated at least once. So there you go, in your face, everyone, about a child I have proof. Where's yours? Uh, <laughs> all right, all right. Um, when you started doing um, doing all this, did you think you'd still be doing it 20 odd, almost 20 years later? Good Lord. Um... Uh, I don't think so. Oh, it, it's it's a, it's because I think at, at that point, like when we first started, I was aware of of like AVGN and and Nostalgia Critic and stuff like that. So like I knew it was it was like a, a thing. Like you could you could 
you could do it professionally. N- not that I've ever reached that level of like success to do this type of stuff personally, but you know, I don't. I don't. You know what? You know what's weird though, and I've, I don't think I don't think I've ever mentioned this to anyone before. But um, there was a moment in like the in like the time before the beginning of 2020 when I left. Um, when I left the FTCR and all that stuff, there was a moment where part of me was thinking like, I don't know how much like, because ev- everything comes to an end, you know, whether it's you decide to leave or, you know, you get snipered by someone. But like, I was, I used to think like, when, when will this end? Um, you know, like when would I either stop doing this or, you know, what have you. And so that's, that's really why that been that that was a big proponent of why I took like three years off because I was like I've, I've been doing that like hashtag content creating for like eleven twelve years at that point and I was just like yeah, let's let's see what life is like about doing this stuff and I I think I I know I've I've gone slightly off topic to what you asked but um don't worry about it I I think. I part of me part of me is glad that I took those three years off because um, I was able to watch a lot more TV back then. But it was also because now I just feel a lot like I have I have just I have I have, I have ideas for shit that I want to do that I think will be pretty fun, and I feel like and I feel like if I hadn't have taken um, that time off for the various reasons why I did. Um, I I would have probably got more burnt out because I, I was I was really starting to feel burnt out um, with with stuff because it was you know I was I was working a full time job. I had at that point my son was like you know a baby baby, so it required a lot a lot of work and just I would I would put in, put in a lot of hours to to FTCR and doing stuff like that. There was even a point where. I had contemplated stepping away when he was born. Just been like, okay, my son's born. Have fun, boys. Like, bye bye. And and part of me kind of wishes I had done that back then. But um, either either way, I, I like I don't think I didn't think when I first started, like when me and Torch were making those sprite comics, and when we, we recorded the first audio commentary. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know, because Torch got out pretty quickly. <laughs> like he he moved away. I was like, no, I'm I'm have fun with that, you know, dork. I'm going away. And so I, uh, it's, I don't think I I would have kept doing this, but part of me thinks I'm not sure what I'm not sure what else I would I would have done with my life if not been doing this crap for all this time. Are are you ready? If it hasn't happened yet, for the day where your son finds out all the things you've done on the internet? Well, uh, well, he he knows I did YouTube videos and he knows he's been in some. Um I don't I don't allow him to watch anything that I've done. <laughs> um but like he know he knows about that stuff and yeah, I think at some point when he gets older, um I imagine he might take cuz at the moment he he unfortunately he watches YouTubers. He he tends to watch more of the like he likes watching stuff like Lanky Box and Mr. Beast. And one time he was like, I'm gonna be a YouTuber when I grow up and I was like, No, that's like the worst thing I ever heard. It was like, No, son, aim better. Don't 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 be don't be like daddy. Aim higher than that. Cause it's it, so like he he knows all of YouTube and, and I am I'm kinda curious as to what part of me thinks like it, it would I think it would either go two ways. One, it's possible he might really get into it. Or two, it'll be like the most embarrassing thing for him, and he'll never want to speak about it again. So I'm, I'm kind of curious if, when he gets a bit older, how he would react to that. Yeah. I have no idea. I wouldn't bless. Me neither. Me neither. <laughs> again, I, I say some fucked up shit in some of that those videos. So I might wait until he's like, when he's eighteen, he can watch he can watch that content, but not before. He'll he'll wonder how he turned out se- semi okay with the dad. That <laughs> yeah, pr- pretty much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> um, you mentioned 
that you were you took your you took a three year break. What what brought you back? What made you think no, I'm I'm ready to go and do this again? You know, it's I don't I honestly I don't I think something just clicked in my head because I think you know I I'd been off when I when I left I like deactivated all my social media um all that kind of stuff about it about a year into it I I reactivated my um Facebook and Instagram just because that's when I would that's those were the things I really used to speak with like friends and family who were back in England so I reactivated those but then in terms of I didn't really have a, have a mind to make content I think the only the only content I did do was the last three parts of the FTCO Wind Waker OP because I had had that I had had that audio since pretty much before I left and I was just like you know, I'll, I'll, you know, because I, I, I always dislike it when like um, series is series like that aren't finished. So I was like, yeah, you know, there's probably some people who were like, I wish they finished Wind Waker. So okay, so I spent like a week, a week at it and those sent them off to um the Chris and he put them up, what have you. But um, aside from well, after after I'd done that, I didn't. I would occasionally have plans and thoughts to just finish undone projects like again i still i still have and again there's one in junk from ftc i still have a few like live panels and videos like that that um i'm in the process of setting up to edit but i i didn't really have any plans to like come back come back and then one day i was just um at home looking on hbo max and they had uh, Transformers: Revenge of the Fallen in their critically acclaimed movies collection, and something in my brain just snapped, and I thought I have to tweet how fucking stupid this is. So that was my first tweet in like three years. It's like I was like, "Hey, it's HBO Max, you guys are dumb. This is a bad idea." Or something to that effect, and um, I'm gonna be honest, like the the response I got, like like. I, a lot of people were like, um, just like, oh, it's you, I keep back, hooray, like, oh, I've missed you, but I, the, the, the response was all, was almost like, it was so positive, and, and so, like, it, it was, it was, like, nothing I'd ever really, really, uh, experienced before, just so many people, and most, you know, people, like, I, you know, there were, like, uh, people I interacted with, like, friends were, tweeted at me so the, the amount, the amount of, of, of people who reacted shocked that I was like alive after posting on Twitter who I had just been like speaking on Facebook with like two days I remember I think it was Sabrina I was just like she was like oh my god I can't believe you're back I'm like I fucking spoke to you two days ago on Facebook what are you talking about like I ain't, I ain't go anywhere but aside from that like, there was just so much like po a positive reaction that that I think at that point that was really when I was like Oh shit, you know, like that's that's pretty. That's you know, again, it was it was so heartwarming. Um, and then I think at that point I was just because I didn't I, I I didn't really have a have a desire to do LPs again because they are a lot of work. Um, but I because I always enjoyed streaming. Um, and so, um, I just thought I just thought I'd give streaming a go. And luckily, that's been that's you know it's it's gone over really. Like, again, I didn't it. I'm really happy with um with with how that's been going. Twitch.tv slash the of the A plug. But um yeah, I you know it's it's again I there wasn't like a plan for me to be like I'm gonna take a break and then come back. I, I truly thought I was done. Um at the start of twenty twelve. I clearly I honestly thought like I'm I'm done. The most I thought I'd do is just finish those unmade projects, which is still on my list to do, which will be done in like ten years. But um, now, now that I'm I'm back, I'm back. I'm like the real slim shady. I'm back again. Um, I I think at this point I'm happy to keep doing this until I drop dead. Um, I honestly, I'm I'm one of the of the people that is glad to see you back. Thank you so much again. Thank you so much, man. Again, you've been you've been very uh, you know supportive in in the streams and on on the Discord and stuff. And again, it it. it 
I know, I know, I'm a, I'm a jokey bastard, but it does. It honestly does. It just it means the world to have people one give a shit about the stuff I do and like seem to really enjoy it. Like that's that kind of stuff. It's it's it means the world. Hey, it's it's free to 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 show appreciation. It is. It's also free to tweet mean things at people. So I appreciate anyone who does either. All right. Um, it probably has been showing, but I've been doing this interview off the cuff. Like I haven't written down <laughs> any questions. Just honestly, been doing. See, I wish. I I wish because I when I used to do interviews, I would always have a list done, and I like just like. I wish I wish I could just like spitball, <laughs> like you have today, because I I ha I'm such a somewhat control freak. I had to have like here's my list. If I like, oh, I'm gonna interview Ian Flynn. Here's my thirty questions I have prepared for him. Like I I, I can't just spitball. And I wish I could. Honestly, I'm doing this partly to see if I if I'm capable to do so, and thanks to you being such a great guest. I think it's coming off well. Thank you. I did. Same here, man. Hell yeah. You're welcome. Um, all right. So, talked about how you, uh, what made you start. Um, talk, actually, talk about several subjects. Um, <laughs> um, what do you think people, once you're well and truly out of it for either because you indeed perished or because you decided enough is enough what do you think people will um, think of you as looking back like 10 years um, after you're done I think to get I don't know to to have a smart ass question to that. It's like I don't like that that would that would depend on like what would happen between now and that happening. I may I may I think if it was to happen now, I think the two things that if if anyone knows me or knows of my work I sound like such a douchebag saying that my work. <laughs> um if if anyone knows me or like like the content I've made, I think I, I'm still to this day probably most known for the city's been fucking destroyed and the captain freak out from the HFC 06 um, LP. Um, probably one of, one of those two things uh, or just known as a big fucking dork. Probably, probably one of those two things. Uh, the city's been like fucking told, destroyed. You know what, let me... Exactly. So, so, let, me, let, me then, let me then turn that around on you. Um, if I, let's, let's say I left again today, um, what would, in 10 years time, what would you remember me for? I'd remember you for being, um, willing to do, to come up with things the... for money. I get you. I get you. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. That's not what I mean. I mean, um, willing to kind of push what uh, like try different things because um, a lot of the things that you did weren't I mean you probably weren't the very first one but were absolutely one of the very first um, and I think that's what people will most remember you by uh, other than the the memes <laughs> um, that's that's my answer. That's I think you'll be okay. seen cool. as a as an influential individual in uh, in creating um, in creating you know, internet content. Oh, thank you so much. That that is that is like that's that's a very very nice answer. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> it's what I truly feel like. You are there at the early on and made the honestly made you 
made a pretty good run out of that, out of it, and you're still doing it. Well, again, thank you. I, I don't, I don't know how to respond. To, again, I'm, I'm not used to receiving compliments, so I, 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 I clam up normally. But thank you so much. That, that means a lot. Honestly, I know how that feels because I'm very much the same on that aspect. <laughs> um, again, just the fact that you... I was just... Um, just to give whoever's listening to this uh, some context to how this ended up happening, I was simply just mentioning that I had we had done a, an interview f several years ago. And how I had deleted it when I was feeling, um, I was feeling depressed. I would just uh, everything I do is bad and horrible and needs to be destroyed. I've been there. I've, I've been there, bud. And I've been there. this this man, without being asked for, immediately asked if uh, immediately said if I wanted to to redo it that he'd be up to. If yeah, that, but but. That, that's just because I'm an insane narcissist and I like to talk a lot. Honestly, I think it shows uh, the exact opposite. <laughs> I, I hope I'm, I'm, sh I'm showing, I'm being able to show how grateful I am for this opportunity. Again, again, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know how to respond to niceness. Stop it. But um, no, again, like you are, you are, you know, I partly I felt bad because I, I, I know you said it was, it was with me and Donny. Yeah. I literally have no memory of, of that first interview whatsoever. So part of it was just like I, I you know, obviously because you know it's I, I truly. I truly uh, appreciate and and uh, welcome every every fan who watches stuff. Like I, you know, it's uh, so I just like to. Have fun and bullshit with people. So, like, you know, I'm, I'm totally because I'm, I want to say there was one time I forget what the group was, but there was there was a there was a Sonic Two Let's Play that I joined. Um, it was just and this was this was a, would have been about ten years ago. Um, someone just messaged me was like, "Hey, you want to join this Sonic Two <laughs> Let's Play?" And I was like, "Sure, why not? Fuck it." <laughs> so there's, there's, and I wish I could remember the channel name, but there was a random Sonic Two Let's Play that I'm just in <laughs> on um... YouTube somewhere. So like stuff like that is stuff like that. Is just, it's I mean, it's just I, you know I like I like to 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 meet new people and and you know just talk about similar interests and shit like that. So like, I, I I always love love doing things like this. If you happen to to remember the name of that channel at some point, I'll I'll put it in the description of the of the video. I will I will do a, a I guess I'll just look for a Sonic Two Let's Plays that feature my voice. But again, I I genuinely cannot remember the name of the channel or anyone else who was in that call with me. But I I will look for it if I can. All right. Um. I don't think I um let me see if I can think of any further questions. Um You you said you talked plenty uh, about how um about Transformers and, and I can tell it, it um influenced your uh, your tastes um in in media. Do you think um do you think uh, any? I'm I'm going somewhere with this. I can do this. <laughs> uh, I believe in you. Let's go. Um, was there any point where um, where you thought about uh, focusing more on that in terms of your content? Oh, oh, okay. um. No, not really, because like I, it was a thing, like with with Sonic, I, um, I kind of partook in as much of of the franchise as I could. Like I didn't have a lot of access to the Archie comic books because they weren't really available in England, unless you went to like a dedicated comic book store. But the nearest one to me as a kid was like an hour away. Um, but like I watched all the cartoons and all the games and I had toys and all that stuff. With Transformers, um, 
again, I, I had watched a lot of G1 as a kid, but then I really didn't get back into Transformers until... Which it, it it was technically before I restarted doing uh, before I started doing FTCR content on my sixteenth birthday. I got the um, Transformers Armada PS2 game, and it came for whatever reason. There was a there was a a, a game store in England called Game. Great name, I know. There for that for whatever reason just gave a free copy of the eighty six Transformers movie um, on DVD. So I remember I I watched it because I was like oh you know I used to watch Transformers this would be fun and like watching that movie that is that is now my the eighty six Transformers the movie is my favorite movie of all time. Do not get me wrong, it is a piece of shit in a lot of ways. It is not the best movie I ever made. It is my favorite movie to watch. And from then I really got into it. But then I think the reason why I didn't like do any content. About it was just because I wasn't that knowledgeable. Because at that point, when I was 16, because the Armada game, there was like, you know, there was the original G1, there was Beast Wars, there was Beast Machines, um, Robots in the Skies, or Car Robots as it was known in Japan. There was Armada, there was all the, 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 the different comic books and all the different toy lines. There was so much um, of that franchise that... Uh, it it was a little bit, I think at that minute I, I can't imagine someone trying to get into that content now who was who not who did not grow up with the franchise, but at then at then there was just a lot a lot of it and um, it was a bit daunting and also no one nobody else in my like immediate friend group was a fan of Transformers at the time, um, and so it was like with FTCR my buddy Torch like Sonic so it was like oh it's you know there's someone else who likes this has a passion for making like content for it let's have a go on it i think at that point if it would have just been me i probably would have given up pretty, pretty quickly to be honest with you but i mean like I, I i do love the franchise i mean that's why things like we did you know uh tj and i did a commentary on uh revenge of the fallen um we did the transformers devastation um lp I had wanted to for a while to stream the Cybertron game. I was going to stream them with my buddy Jonathan. Um, so, and I will, I will probably do some kind of Transformers content in the future. But um, I, again, it's, I think I think if I had gone full Transformers back in the day, I would have given up probably within a year. To be honest with you. Yeah, understandable. It's always harder when you don't have someone to bounce off of. Yeah, but also it, it was especially for that because I wasn't I wasn't that like knowledgeable of the franchise, and again, it's like I not that this would have stopped me back in the day because you know when you're young, you you think you know everything, but like I I guarantee you, I would have just made mis- like gotten shit wrong, <laughs> like made mistakes. Um, you know the the arrogance of youth would have just no nah, everything I do is great. Um, and looking back now, I, I glad I didn't because again, that that content would have been terrible. <laughs> oh well. Um... I will say it's 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 somewhat it's slightly Transformers related, and I brought him up earlier. But again, Chris McFeely's The Basics um, is such a good like it's such a great series and a great concept. That that show's been on for like six years now. For the last few years, I I have been toying with a like um, like a Sonic version of that. Not like Sonic the Basic, because I wouldn't want to in you know encroach on um, Christians like Brandon. But doing something like like here is a here is a beginner's basic guide to certain aspects of of the Sonic franchise. Um, like a hey, this is a video on STC knuckles, you know, like like that type of thing. Um, that's something I've been, I've been thinking about maybe doing, but unlike unlike Chris, you know, because he does that's his job now. Like every week or so, he has a different video. I probably just if I do that, um, although there's there's, pro- there's probably a version of that out now, and if not, me saying this in this interview will have someone steal the idea before I, I can get to it. Um, but. I'd pro- I, I, if if I do this, I would probably do it in like ten episode chunks. Like I'll make ten, release them online, 
six months to a year later, I'll do some more. But that's that's it's not it's not on my immediate list of things I want to do. But that that's something I've been toying with for like two years now. That that sounds per, um, like a fun video to watch at the very least. Videos. It does. I'm I'm not sure how fun it would be to make, but that is again that is that is. Well. It's it's. It's something I might do. I, I, again, I don't know yet, but it, it's something I'm, I am looking into doing. If there's anything I can do to help, I'm, I'd be willing to. Give me 50 grand so I can quit my job and work on it full time. There you go. <laughs> okay, I'll just need to find the 50 grand then. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, honestly, I think I covered what I... Uh, I would ask the things that I sort of had in my mind to to ask. So I think it's a good point to wrap it up. Okay, hey man. Yeah, again, thank you so much for having me. And you know, I I want to ask you a question because did this will determine how well this interview goes, and depending on your answer, if I ever come back for a third go. All right. Sonic right. Adventure or Sonic Adventure or Sonic Adventure Two. Um, adventure one. Okay, good. If you would have said two, I would have just did, I would have just ended the call right then and there. <laughs> and that kids is called remembering someone's opinion on something. <laughs> Actually, he did his research. Good job. <laughs> okay, I watched it at the time at the time, and I just happened to remember. But I legit like I say one better than I say two. <laughs> So, as all as all good-hearted people should. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> it was. I I'm very very thankful uh, that you came on here. Um, thank you for coming on. Of course, man. Anytime. And to the audience, uh, hopefully, will this will become more of a regular thing. See you all next time. Bye!